Hi everyone, uh, it's Tyler T Productions, and I'm back with another episode of uh, Tyler T's Amateur Album Reviews. Before I get started though, I want to say that I look like shit today because I, uh, I'm like sick and I'm just like, nah. but I'm providing you guys with an episode because I like to keep on track now, so, um, and it is Wednesday, so, which is the day of the week that I do these. Um, yeah, and also I wanted to say that um, I don't do, um, like, uh, collaboration albums or, um, singles, uh, like an album of a certain artist's singles. I don't, uh, do, uh, I don't review stuff like that. I might in the future, but right now it's just strictly studio albums. The studio release of the album, not extra, like, re-release with extra stuff, just the studio release of the album. So I just want to get that out of the way. Um, this week's episode, actually, I'm departing from Silver Chair because I've done uh, all their studio albums, and I'm moving on uh, to uh, different bands now. So, and that'll continue um, for the rest of the uh, my uh, series. So, um, today's episode is going to be uh, Deftones' White Pony, and it's their uh, third album released, um, third studio album released. It was released in 2000. Um, and I would like to say first, like, Deftones is my second favorite band, so, you know, Silver Chair was first, Deftones is second, and then uh, third is Say Anything. But, um, yeah, White Pony is probably one of my, f it's in my top five uh, favorite albums of all time. I think it's number four. Um, might be th three. But it's got a lot of good songs on it, so um, I'm actually going to get right into it. Alright, first song is uh, Feet Sierra. I don't even know how to pronounce that actually. Um, and. Sorry, dropped that. It, uh, it's a good song. It, I, like, I like the guitar it starts out with, and then the drums uh, come in, and uh, Chino's just uh, start, you know, doing. See, the thing with Chino's vocals are. It, he's distinctly different than, like, Daniel John's, but. He's got his own like uniqueness, and I just love it because he has like whispering like vocals, and he does really good screams too. Um, yeah, so this song, uh, it's just, I I don't know like a whole lot about um, the song. I mean, I like it and I listen to it, but it's not like a huge and you know, a great thing. But regardless, it's still a great metal song. So four out of five stars. Next track is Digital Bath, and. This was the uh, third single release off the album in uh, early 2001, um, at least as a promotions, promotional single, and they actually released a music video with it too. Um, Digital Bath is my favorite song on White Pony, and it's probably my favorite Deftones song, period. Um, I love the drum when the drums come in, and it's just like calm, and then it's also even more calm because Chino's like whispering, uh, whispering singing. And Chino also does re some really like amazing like high pitched vocals that you don't really see in a lot of other Deftones songs, which I think is really really unique. And I just think Digital Bath is one of the most uh, amazing songs you know Deftones have ever produced. So, Def I mean, Digital Bath gets five out of five stars. Next song is Elite, and I actually don't really like this song that much. Um, it's heavy, obviously. You know, alternative metal albums will be heavy, but um. Elite is just, I never really fancied it that much. And it's funny because a lot of people like it, and a lot of people, uh, or it got, I think it got an award for best metal performance in, in like 2000, 2001 or something. I don't know the specifics on it, but uh, it got like an award or nominated for an award or something. So, I mean, I, apparently other people really like this song, like at least in the terms of metal music, but I'm not a huge fan of it, so. Uh, Elite, I give two out of five stars. RX Queen. Um, RX Queen. The thing about RX Queen is really interesting. Is that uh, the the guitar sounds. It's, it's either the guitar or bass. For some reason, I can't tell. I guess I suck at determining instruments on this album. But. Um, when that starts playing, it's like down, 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 and I think that's really like eerie, not so much eerie, but like really like cool sounding, and I think that's really great. And then the drums are just constantly like, 
and uh, Arx Queen is a is a good song. Um, it features Scott Wheland Wheland on it, and I don't know about a lot about him except I think he's from Stone Temple Pilots. Um, so Arx Queen's a good song. It's not the best on the album. It's not the worst on the album. Uh, I give Arx Queen four out of five stars. Next song is Street Carp, um, and I actually really like this song. I like how it starts out. Chino like screams. It's kind of like a, like almost sounds like he's cupping his vocals, and he screams it, and it just comes in like. Doof. Um, uh, a certain part of the song I really like. I'm gonna get to it. Uh, I don't know. I can't pinpoint the song exactly where I really like it, but um, I really, really like the chorus too. So, Street Carp gets 5 out of 5 stars. Teenager. This is probably my third favorite on the album. Um, it's this song, actually, I think Chino wrote when he was 16, of Teenager. So, Teenager. Um, it's really, really calm, and it's kind of like crackly sounding, but when it starts up, it's like... The lyrics are kind of immature for Chino. Obviously, he was 16 when he made it, but I think it's really a beautiful song, actually, and whoever doesn't like this song, I, I kind of would understand, because, I mean, it, it shows, like, the songwriting of, or the lyrics about, like, back when they were younger than like when they were a bit older so I think it kind of balances out and it's I really I just really like it I don't know um I don't know it's just a really good uh song so um I give Teenager 5 out of 5 stars Knife Party uh Knife Party is probably the it was probably my second favorite might be my tied for third with Teenager, but I love the uh, guitar that starts out um, the riff, and then the drums come in. I find myself singing along to this song all the time, and uh, it features, um, I'm seeing here, it features Rodleen Getzik, and I don't really know who that is, um, and she's, she's in the song. She does, like, these high-pitched, like, vocals and, like, in the song, it's like kind of goes with the song though, because it's like aggressive. And knife party, I think, actually is about um, uh, needles and like go get your knife and lie down. It's it's talking about uh, needles and things, syringes and stuff, and doing drugs. But um, I don't know. It's a weird uh, metaphor for that, I guess. But um, I really, really love the chorus on this one too. Uh, knife party gets five out of five stars. Korea, I was never a really huge fan of Korea uh, either. Um, there's not much to say about this song. Same with Elite. They're both really heavy metal songs and they're good Deftone songs, but in my like, experience, I don't really, I guess I don't appreciate them as much as other people do and I guess that's, that's what, you know, that's what the reasoning behind me giving it three out of five stars. Passenger. Now, I really, 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 really like this song. Um, I think they released a music video for it, but um, it wasn't a single. I don't think it features Maynard and James Keenan from Tool, which I think is awesome. They actually performed this song live with him, doing the other like dual vocals, and I think that's amazing. Passenger starts out kind of like slow, just because there's like other noises like in the background happening, and then when it comes in. Um, I don't know, it's just, it, the, the vocals between both of them go, like, amazingly together. Like, Chino's self-whispered vocals and Maynard's, like, yells and, like, singing, and it just combines, and I just think it's beautiful. Uh, Passenger is also another song I really, really like on the album. Passenger gets five out of five stars. Uh, Change in the House of Flies. This was the first single released off the album, and I think it was released in late, uh, 2000. Um... This song was actually funny, because this song was actually used on a lot of uh, soundtracks to uh, movies and TV shows and stuff. Um, 
for example, it was on the uh, Queen of the Damned soundtrack. Um, but uh, I really, really like it. Uh, Chino's vocals. Um, and I watched you change into a fly. Uh, just the, the, I guess the the symbolism and the metaphors in this song, uh, I think appreciate more than the actual like instrument instrumentation behind the song itself. But that being said, without the instrumentation, I don't think the lyrics would make that much sense because the instrumentation, uh, everything, all the instruments, you know, I, I'll count his vocals as an instrument. Um, it gives uh, emphasis to uh, this idea that you know you saw someone change before you and like they're completely different now, and you know that that fits for a lot of people. They, a lot of you guys probably knew someone and then they changed completely and now they're not who they used to be. But um, Changing the House of Flies gets five out of five stars. Next song is Pink Maggot, and this song. Um, I really, really like the song, and it's interesting because this is the last song on the album. But in the reissue of the album, they took the course of Pink Maggot and made it into a new song with like added rap from Chino, and they made it. They called it Back to School Mini Maggot, and that was uh, the second single released in early 2001 off the album. And Chino actually regrets making that song, and you know what? I regret them making it too because I don't really like the song. Um, Back to School Mini Maggot, but I love Pink Maggot. I absolutely love Pink Maggot. It's I think it's my second favorite song. Uh, the guitar is like all like distorted and everything in the beginning, and then Chino's just like whispering, and then he like starts like this like screeching, screaming, uh, near like somewhat towards the middle. And then the then everything comes in like heavy to close the album, like the drums and everything, and I just think that works so well. So. Pink Maggot gets 5 out of 5 stars. Alright, so that's uh, Deftones' White Pony. Uh, it came out in 2000, third studio album they released. Um, and I'm going to count up the stars. A uh, total of 11 songs with a possible of 5 stars each gives it a possible total of 55 stars. And it got 48 out of 55 stars, which is 87.2% and that puts it at I think my fourth favorite album of all time subject to change when I found out about more albums but uh, this in my opinion and a lot of other people's opinions if you know about Deftones this is their best album it's got the greatest amount of songs and greatest variety um, they experimented more with this album than the past two albums um, it's more psychedelic rock added into what their original formula was which was about rap rock um, and new metal and now this this album as a whole is quite amazing actually and if not if you don't really like Deftones that's alright but I suggest listening to a few of their songs um, and then maybe you'll like them I would probably suggest Change in the House of Flies that's probably one that mo most the most people in the public would actually like um, off of the album but if you're really into metal uh, and especially uh, alternative metal and uh, new metal then you're gonna want to pick up White Pony so uh, that was this episode. Uh, next week's episode, uh, I'm not sure what band I'll do, but I'll get back to you guys on that. So see you until next time.